your API documentation powered by API. And we have the same structure that uh, after the session, we will reserve a couple of minutes for the Q&A. So please feel free to drop your questions in the chat box as well. So over to you, Herb. So how we would be joining us in just a couple of minutes. Hi, thank you so much uh, for the introduction. Great. Uh, you, Take it away. Yeah, sure. Uh, so I will share my screen. All right, cool. Everybody can see my screen? Yes. Uh, yeah, so uh, I just wanted to correct that the, the title of the talk is um, API Documentation Powered by a Artificial Intelligence, not by API. Um, so thank you for, for having me. Um, most API documentation sucks. Um, and unfortunately, it's not my opinion, but it's actually from a large scale survey that uh, came out last year by Smart Better that um, reported that 35% of API providers feels like their API is above average, uh, meaning that 65% feel like their API documentation is below average. Now, the good thing is that 50% uh, of those people uh, said that API documentation was a top priority. Now, you know, Obviously, we're in a world where software is moving fast, where we're releasing really quickly, and our architectures are becoming more and more complex. And so it's more and more difficult for us to build quality API. Uh, lack of resources, time, and toolings are the most uh, frequently cited elements of why uh, API documentation is not as good as, as it should be. Now, uh, if you look at each of those, uh, specifically at the data, um, you really see that it's across all uh, companies of all size, uh, from really small companies to really big companies. It's big resources and times and tooling is becoming, uh, is a hindrance and an obstacle for us to build good APIs. Um, nevertheless, uh, the survey also reported that for in order to have what's considered a good quality API is three things, right? Um, ease of use, performance, and detailed documentation. And obviously, if you have a good documentation, good detailed documentation, that makes it easy for you, for other people to, do, to use them. Um, what's more worrying when you look in details about that report is that as you can see, there's two bars here from 2016 to 2019. And what you will see from those two criteria that impact documentation and the developer experience is uh, increasing a lot in three years, right? So meaning that the expectations from developers is that, uh, or users of APIs, is that ease of use and accurate and detailed documentation is becoming more and more important and more and more critical to them using your APIs. So what am I going to talk? Uh, what am I going to talk to you about today? Um, one is what is what makes a good API? Uh, what are the criteria? What are the characteristics of a good API? Next, I will jump into how can we create good API docs using AI-powered tools, and then finally, how do we keep that maintenance, that updates, that upkeep easy for us uh, API developers? So what do dev wants? So I got two lists from uh, Pronovix and Nordic APIs, and I got their, and extracted from their uh, best practice of what makes a good API. And what I've noticed really is that it's always about two things, two main things that are important when you look at those lists. One is 
what can I do as a developer? What can I, as a customer of the API, as a consumer of the API, what can I do? And how can I do it, right? And this is just the basic two things that people are looking into when they're looking at APIs. Right? So what can I do? You can see it from easy to find in search and this kind of um, calls back to what um, was said by the speaker earlier about uh, Christoph about discoverability, right? Uh, easy to find and easy to search, quick start guide, endpoint definitions, right? Now, the second point is how can I use it? How can I do what the API says it does, right? And you can see those points being highlighted, being, and, and to make it easier, you know, obviously you want an API that's interactive, readable, and consumable, have a clear authentication guide, have code snippets, have example responses, right? Now, uh, another um, report that uh, I looked at in order to understand how developers use code and APIs is a study by Google. Um, and as you may or may not know, Google has this internal uh, amazing search tool that allows their developers to actually search within the Google code base, uh, which is you know millions or billions of lines of codes. And what they found is basically all those different use cases of how developers actually search for code. And I extracted from that the most important ones that that are related to API development. Uh, again, what can I do and how can I do it? Um, so it, it very much uh, resonates with what uh, uh, Pronovix and Nordic APIs were referring to, which is example code usage, uh, discoverability through browsing, best practice, uh, why is something failing, et cetera, et cetera. Now, um, now let's jump into this demo. Um, what I'm gonna do now is uh, show you uh, the API that I'm actually going to build the API docs for. Uh, it's a medium clone application, so like a blog application. Um, I will show you what example API, uh, how I implemented some of the code for the example, uh, to use the um, example APIs. Um, I will use Quote AI to generate documentation automatically. And finally, I'm gonna show you some sample code and show you how it works for the API itself. Oops. Um, sorry, actually, before I do that, I wanted to show one last slide. Uh, I went a little bit out of order. Um, I forgot to showcase, obviously, the um, the model of the best APIs that everybody always refers to, which is uh, Stripe's API, right? Uh, and again, um, one of the things I want to make clear here is that uh, API documentations don't have to be complex, right? Uh, if you look at the Stripe API, it's basically just a single page. And when it comes to the two elements that uh, are, ex are, make, are important for con API consumers, you can see that Stripe solves that problem in a very easy way, right? You have discoverability and search and how can, what can I do with this API, right? In yellow with the search bar and then the easy navigation here. And how can I do it? Just really uh, give you examples of, of code. So going back to my demo, apologize for that. Apologies for that. Um, so I'm gonna introduce uh, the API uh, that I will be showcasing for this demo, right? Um, and so this is basically the, I wanna show you the, the example app that I'm using. It's Conduit, uh, it's basically a medium clone. It's like a blogging application. Um, you can you know, read articles by tags or using a global feed. Um, you can obviously uh, write articles. Um, you can favorite articles, you can edit, you can delete, and you know, your, your classical blog application. Now, what I'm gonna show you is some sample code that I wrote. Uh, so this is actually the repo for the Conduit server. And um, what I'm gonna show now is uh, in there, I wrote uh, a few examples of how to use the Conduit uh, API. And so here you have really uh, three different uh, client side code um, that uh, showcases some of the API, one about articles and one about favorites. 
So um, for articles, um, I wrote really bas two basic examples of how you can get all the articles from the APIs and how you can actually create an article, right? Um, so it uses uh, Node.js and some JavaScript code. And as you can see, um, uh, it uses the Axios library, which is pretty classic. Great. Um, so now uh, that we've done that, um, what I'm going to do is actually submit this repository to Code AI and see how we can generate API documentation easily from here. Cool. Um, so this is Code AI, um, and what you'll see on the right is a bunch of open source repository that we've submitted. Um, and what Code AI does is that it takes the repositories, break uh, each of the files in the repository into pieces, uh, and breaks them into small snippets of code. And from that snippets of code, uh, we run, uh, Code AI runs AP, uh, deep learning and natural language processing to automatically organize the code to make it easier to search, navigate, and understand. So what I'm gonna do now is add the repository uh, to Code AI, the conduit server um, repository. All right. So it's already been added, uh, but as you can see uh, before that, what I what I would have done is just uh, using uh, the the add button here. When you log in, basically Code AI pulls all your repositories, and you can add them for processing. I've already done that for the conduit server. So let's check out what uh, actually was generated for our conduit. Um, so here, uh, so everything that you see here is completely auto-generated, right? So the AI models actually generated all this, the source code for the conduit um, server uh, node application. And you can see that uh, it's, it's pretty impressive. I'm always amazed when I see this because this is actually a robot who generated this. Uh, now what's neat is that uh, Core AI automatically detected uh, different um, business and technical concept out of each of those snippets of code. So you can see we have ORM queries here uh, using user find by. We have the HTTP API, sorry, which is a classic express um, construct. And we have the domain concept, right? So this is about articles and comments, right? Um, so now what I'm gonna do, I wanna create the API documentation, right? So I'm gonna go to all the tags that um, Code AI was able to extract from that uh, particular repo. And what I really want to go for is all the HTTP API requests, right? I want to find the code that I wrote earlier to uh, find, uh, to, to create articles, to list articles, right? And so what's nice about uh, Core AI is that when you search, it gives you related search, right? So you can see that there's five HTTP requests for uh, favorites and four for articles, right? So it allows me to filter the search quite easily. Um, so from here on, um, I can easily uh, basically have scoped all the article, all the code that actually is related to uh, creating articles. Um, so what I'm going to do now is basically create what's called a collection. Um, a collection is kind of like a, a, a wiki page, if you will, uh, that allows me to group uh, different sets of code snippets together. Right. So here I'm going to create a collection that's called. Um, articles API, right? So now this has been added to the articles API as a potential example usage and documentation, right? Uh, and the other one is how do we get all the articles in the API, uh, from the API? Go here and then add it to the articles API, right? Neat. Uh, so now that we have that, I have a collection. Uh, this has been, uh, you know, created by me, uh, but using the power of AI to automatically organize the code, we have where do we post API articles and then how do we to get all the articles um, in the, uh, as an API documentation. Now, uh, I probably want to, uh, one of the things I forgot to do is to show how we get the API tokens, right? So uh, if somebody comes here and just uses this, they probably would be wondering uh, where the API token is coming from. So I'm gonna go back. Uh, 
right? And instead of uh, article, I'm gonna search for login or authentication. Uh, so that's pretty neat. So now I have the uh, Axios example usage to um, actually call the API to actually create a username and password for the API, right? Uh, so I'm gonna pass it here. Um, and one of the nice things you can do, I already done it here, uh, but you can actually uh, give uh, indication and communicate with your users if they have any questions about how to consume the API, right? So here I clarified that uh, to get the email and password, you can get it from uh, registering to my um, local host, which is where I'm running the API right now. Um, and you can always mention people. So um, uh, you know, basically mention anybody that's in the repo. Um, so now let's go back to my API documentation. Um, at this point, I have all I need. So the problem is right now, what, uh, the API login function is really at the end and I really want to move it to the beginning uh, because that helps uh, obviously uh, the users understand um, how they can, that they need the API um, token first and they need to register first in order to actually consume this API, right? Um, so that's neat, uh, I have all I need um, and basically, um, that's pretty much it. I have built an API documentation from actual example code in just a, a few uh, minutes. Um, now what's interesting is that before that, I created an API documentation for the favorites API. Uh, obviously in Conduit, you can uh, add or remove uh, documentation, uh, sorry, uh, add or remove um, articles from favorite, you can unfavorite it. So uh, this is a way to easily discover the API. Um, we can check out this collection, which is, you know, where do we create favorite? Uh, where do we delete favorites? Uh, how do we get all the favorites, um, et cetera. Um, so now for fun, I'm going to run the code. Um, so uh, this actually, well, I you may recognize REPL here, which allows me to run code. Um, and so what I'm gonna do here to make it easy to interact with my API. Uh, so this is the latest APIs. Uh, let's use the favorite API uh, to make it simple, um, actually. Uh, I'm replace that code um, and show you a live demo. Um, so a little bit, so I've pasted the API uh, and now what I really wanna do is make sure that my server is running on my computer, uh, which it is. And then, um, so first of all, I'll probably need a API token, um, which uh, I'm going to get in a second. Right, so I got the API token, um, and what I'm gonna do now is just replace it here. Uh, and then I will, I'm gonna get all the favorites that I have for this particular, uh, for uh, Conduit. So it just basically lists all the favorites that I have. Uh, I'm gonna call it. Okay, so I have none. Uh, that should be normal, uh, but let's say I wanna, now logged in, I want to uh, favorite a particular article, uh, mastering JS uh, console log, right? Um, call it again. Cool. Um, so yeah, uh, back to the presentation. Uh, so as you can see, um, I was able to create a demo in just a, a few minutes. 
uh, based on existing example uh, code usage for that demo. Again, if you look at what we've done, it's all about what can I do and how can I do it. So what can I do? You can use the search bar to actually find, um, you know, uh, different explore and discover different APIs. You can use collections to discover the different you know, entities uh, like articles or favorites for the APIs. Uh, you have a table of content that really allows me to jump into different sections to discover what can be done on articles. Um, we have tags also that are completely auto-generated uh, by the AI models um, so that you can discover and explore code or your APIs in an easy way. And then obviously you have source code that allows you to, uh, that helps you to know how can you actually do what you want with the API. And we have a nice, uh, communication platform uh, that allows you to mention and ask uh, developers uh, for help if you need to. Thanks a lot, Hov. And uh, we're almost at the right time. Thanks okay. for also finishing this session at the right time. And sure. I've already enjoyed this session, and I'm sure the audiences have. If you can also drop your contact details, they, oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, they can reach out to you later as well. Yeah, uh, let me share my screen. Uh, I can, I'll paste it on the stage as well, but. Yes, you can yeah, just paste um, it on the stage and yeah. I can then introduce the next speaker. But once again, thank you so much for joining me and also share all your insights. Thank you. Uh, should I be answering the questions? Yeah, so with respect to the questions, uh, the audiences can reach out to you later on because we are following okay. a quick timeline. So okay, okay. Yeah. Sasha, just leave. Yeah. All right, thank you very, very much, Zuraj, for having me. Thank you. Bye.